Hi, this is Chandrasekhar Prabhu once again. Thank you very much because most of you have been uh, sending me messages and calling me to check about my health. It has been quite some time since I posted a video on this channel and quite a few felt that that must have been due to my ill health and called and sent messages to check about my health. Some of you were really very worried for me. Thank you for the same. Let me clarify that my health has been perfectly all right. There has been nothing wrong with my health. There were two reasons why I did not uh, post uh, on the YouTube channel. Firstly, because this was the festive season, we had the uh, Janmashtami, we had the Dahi Andi, we had Ganesh festivals, we had all the festivals one after the other coming in. And during festivities, people send uh, WhatsApp messages wishing people on the festivities. And in this deluge of messages, sometimes serious comments and serious videos such as ours go unnoticed and people do not have time during the festivals to spare some time to watch a 10 minute 15 minute 20 minute or sometimes even half an hour video i have been holding meetings with cooperative housing societies on regular basis i could have uploaded the recordings of my meetings which happen on a regular basis on the YouTube but I did not want because most of the questions are repetitive and my answers are on expected lines and if you have seen some of these meetings which are there in Hindi Marathi and English uh, then looking at these videos all over again doesn't make much of a sense secondly we had expected that the rbi should come up with some good news so far that good news on the part of the rbi has not come although there is some good news on the part of the nbfcs and the hfcs that they are making good progress with the couple of societies that they have taken on a pilot basis however unless one has something very concrete and something very positive something very serious to convey to all our viewers because our viewership has uh, crossed the one lakh mark and if we have some unless we have something very serious i do not want to uh, you know take your time with non serious videos so today we are coming up with a very very serious issue Last time we spoke about the BIT chawls, the redevelopment of BIT chawls which belong to the municipal corporation. Apart from the BIT chawls, the municipal corporation has more than 7,000 properties, mostly in the island cities and some in the suburbs which are tenanted and which have been acquired by the municipal corporation over a period of years and where the tenants of the municipal corporation live. Broadly, these properties can be divided into two parts. One are the properties which earlier belonged to private landowners who had their own tenants and they defaulted on the taxes and payments to be made to the MCGM. And so MCGM over a period of years acquired the properties of defaulters after putting them for auction and second is the mcgm's own properties where it had built chawls where its own tenants have been living for 40 years 50 years sometimes even 80 or 90 years and the mcgm has been the owners of these properties and they need to be redeveloped so let us discuss those properties. Let us let me make it clear that any MCGM property with tenants which have come up after the year 1969 have no, I repeat, 
no policy for redevelopment at all. That means if some, some property has been built by MCGM in 1970s, shall we say, it would be at least 52 years old. A 52 year old property of the MCGM would be old enough to warrant redevelopment. The MCGM in its own DC rule says that any property which is more than 30 years and is eligible for redevelopment will be redeveloped. However, its own properties which are 52 years old, there is no policy for redevelopment. We will come to that issue in our next video. But as of now, let us take the MCGM tenanted properties which are owned by MCGM, the tenants are living and what is the redevelopment policy? They are covered under the clause 337, 337, 337, which covers the old and dilapidated cest building. The same clause covers the MCGM properties. However, there is a hitch. While the MADA properties which are given for redevelopment to those who occupy the MADA properties in MADA colonies uh, all over the city, including southern part of Mumbai, the MCGM properties do not permit mortgaging of their land by the Cooperative Society of uh, Residents for the purposes of redevelopment, which means that any residents of the MCGM, if they want to undertake redevelopment on, the, on their own under the self-redevelopment program, will have to prove to the MCGM that they are financially capable. Now, imagine people living in 10 by 10, 10 by 12 square feet, 10 feet by 12 square feet, square feet uh, uh, tenement in one room with a small little uh, bath in there and the kitchen, which is a part of that one room. They are being asked by the MCGM after living in MCGM property for 70, 80 years to prove that they are financially capable of redeveloping their property and they are being told that look you will not be permitted to take loans because the land you can you are entitled to loans but we shall not permit our land to be mortgaged without mortgaging our land uh, you can take loan which bank or organization is willing to give loan to such organization plus the cooperative the proposed cooperative housing society of such residents is supposed to prove to the MCGM as to how they are going to raise the funds. On one hand, if the tenants go to a developer and the developer doesn't have the wherewithal to uh, redevelop the property, doesn't have the financial capacity, the MCGM gives the developer the permission. And the developers has, so have so far in most cases cheated. There have been a few stray examples where the developers have successfully done redevelopment of MCGM properties. But otherwise, in most cases, by MCGM's own admission, the developers have cheated them. But MCGM prefers the cheaters, the developers as cheaters to their own residents. If I were at the helm of MCGM, I would have uh, decided that, look, in any case, the developers are going to cheat us. Why don't we facilitate our own tenants to redevelop the property and create a conducive atmosphere and speak to the financial institution to ensure that they get the necessary money so that it can be uh, the, uh, the property can be redeveloped and MCGM can get substantial amount of revenue. Let us understand what the MCGM stands to lose if these properties are not redeveloped. Let us understand that. Under the new scheme, whatever is required to reaccommodate the existing people, which is 425 or 450 as the case may be, 
fifty percent of that is given as an incentive. Anything over and above that has to be shared with the MCGM in a sixty forty manner, which is sixty percent to the MCGM. So, if these properties three thousand four thousand properties are developed. By a rough estimate, the MCGM is likely to get thirty thousand crore worth constructed area. Not only will this constructed area be beneficial to the MCGM to accommodate the project affected persons and also to accommodate their own own staff as staff quarters. If they were to sell portion of these areas, they can make a revenue. substantial revenue model but mcgm is not in interested i spoke to the concerned officials of the estate department which is responsible for maintaining these uh, uh, properties they have understood that if this policy continues the way it is the likelihood of these properties getting redeveloped and they're getting substantial returns is virtually nil they also understand that unless the people are taken into confidence and their confidence is gained the people are not willing to trust the builders because the builders want to cheat the people but they have an issue they have an issue very genuine issues they feel that if the loans are taken by the people and they are unsuccessful in their effort to redevelop the property and the loans are not repaid and the mcgm is owner of the land will the mcgm face the liability that is one second issue what they feel is that the uh, cooperative housing society proposed or otherwise of the residents keep on changing because it's a democratic process and after every 2 years 3 years or 5 years the committees keep on changing an old committee may have entered into an agreement with the mcgm on certain terms and conditions a new committee comes and is not enthusiastic to implement those conditions then the mcgm is in trouble the solutions as discussed with them are also very clear even if the managing committee of the cooperative society has to change due to the democratic processes the there could be a development committee and there could be a resolution of the general body that the development committee continues irrespective of the change in managing committee and the development committee will derive the rights of development on behalf of all the people and they will be held responsible by the people with regard to the returning of the funds it will be ensured that the entire scheme will be totally monitored and overseen by the uh, municipal corporation to ensure that the surplus area the sale of surplus area will be always under the control of the municipal corporation so that the question of paying the financial institution after the sale would not be there that means solutions are there but the archaic laws which have been heavily builder driven and builder oriented it is very clear that in the good old days we have seen that the that the there is a unholy nexus that goes on in the mcgm and this unholy nexus is uh, a combination of a section of politicians section of bureaucracy together with the builders and all good bmc properties are sought to be handed over to builders and it is through the builders that they want to develop it they do not want people who come up with initiative to develop the properties uh, to be given the rights to redevelopment but now the tenants have become uh, alert the te tenants have realized their uh, rights the younger tenants who are qualified though they live in a 10 by 10 or 10 by 12 or 10 by 15 square feet area the younger tenants are engineers they are doctors they are software engineers they are chartered accountant they are lawyers and they have understood that their parents started off humbly 
and they were born in a very small premises. But the tenants know the potential of what can be done. And these younger people have come together. And now they are representing before the municipal corporation and newer and newer self-redevelopment schemes are being proposed to the municipal corporation. And I must tell you that the response of the officers at various levels has been very, very encouraging. And considering this encouraging response with the people put together, we have put together a few pilot projects. There is one pilot project near uh, 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 Crawford Market. There is another pilot project near Musafir Khana, which is again very near the uh, uh, Crawford Market. There is another pilot project, which is again in the A Ward, which is in the southern part of uh, Bombay in Kolaba area. A fourth pilot project is in Naigao in the other east. And a fifth pilot project is again in the island city. So all these pilot projects, the tenants have got together. They, are, uh, they have approached architects. Architects have done uh, their work. And we are trying to identify. Fortunately, in these projects, there is commercial area to be sold. And we are trying to identify good anchor tenants who come in advance and the anchor tenants then assure the municipal corporation that you don't worry, the funds will come. So the financial guarantees are given by the anchor tenant. The loans are guaranteed by the anchor tenants and the municipal corporation's conditions of guarantee for the finances are satisfied. And we are making a hybrid uh, scheme. However, I'm not happy with this scheme. We are doing it because that's the only way in which the present system can be used to the benefit of the people. I want this entire policy of the municipal corporations uh, properties, redevelopment of those properties to change. I want the municipal corporation to get a uh, 1 lakh crores or 2 lakh crores benefit out of the property. This money can go towards public projects and infrastructure projects for the benefit of the common man. This can happen, but the municipal corporation can't be rigid. It can't be pro-builder. And those elements who have vested interests in the municipal corporation should, should take a back seat. And the people now with the corporation elections round the corner, it is up to the people to pose these issues. I'm sure the tenants of the municipal corporation will pose these issues to the uh, municipal authorities. And I'm very confident that something new will emerge. And uh, we will see all the properties of the municipal corporation being redeveloped under the self-redevelopment scheme. With this, this is Chandrasekhar Prabhu bidding you or Rava promising you to be back with many more posts. Bye for now.